Being a modern day footballer requires a lot more than just being technically skillful on the ball, tactically knowledgeable or mentally resilient. It also requires a great football physique. And that physique is something that you build up on the pitch, but also in the gym. I've been doing football specific strength work for the past 10 years. And today I will talk about how I think like a footballer in the gym, how I structure my sessions, and also I will talk you through some basic exercises that you can do right away. Let's begin. So as footballers, why do we actually have to go to the gym? There's a few reasons. One reason, and really the biggest reason of them all, is that strength is the foundation of a lot of different attributes, like your speed on the pitch, your jumping ability, your injury resilience, your ability to change direction. All of those qualities stems from your strength. And the gym is the place where we most effectively can build our strength and because of that also enhance our other physical qualities. Fortunately, a lot of players don't really know what to do once they actually go to the gym. And I can totally understand this because there's so much things out there today and so many exercises and it's really hard to know what to actually do once you get there. But in reality, it's really simple if you know the basic principles of it. So the first and really vital step is to put some context into your own situation. Ask yourself questions like, how long have I been doing strength training? What age am I? How many sessions can I get into a week? Is building strength and the gym my priority as a footballer right now? All of these questions will get you closer to an answer of how often you should go to the gym and how much you want to prioritize it. Once you have a better idea of what you actually want to do with the gym and how much you want to prioritize it, then it's about, okay, what should I do when I get to the gym? As footballers, the majority of the focus in the gym should be put on our lower body and our core, because these are the muscles that we use most frequently in the game, and those are the muscles that will help you, if being stronger, that will help you out on the pitch. But you also shouldn't neglect your upper body because it's important in physical duels and for balance reasons. It's important to have a holistic perspective and cover the majority of all your muscle groups to get a good balance. How do I structure my own gym sessions? So this have changed during the course of the 10 years that I've really been doing strength training and for the past five years when I really started to take the gym more seriously. Since then, 90% of the time, I have some type of plan before I go to the gym. This way it makes it way more efficient than just going there and then starting to figure out things along the way. But if I have a plan of, okay, these are the exercises that I wanna tackle in this session, I, then I do them to the best of my ability, and then I head out and then I know that I'm done and I have done the things that I planned beforehand and that I know will help me the most. So what I always like to do is always start up with a warm up. Even though the gym isn't as explosive and as intense as playing football is, it's still really important to get into the habit of getting a good warm up in before you start the exercises. So what does my warm up consist of? I usually like to start off with some biking, either on a stationary bike or a leg bike as I like to call them. I usually bike for about five to 10 minutes, depending on how I feel for the day. If I feel stiff or if I feel like I just need an extended warm up, I may go for 10 minutes instead of five. Then straight after the biking, I want to ramp up the intensity a bit. So I head for the treadmill and go for a jog slash a run for about five to 10 minutes as well. And here I like to start off at around eight kilometers per hour. And then as I go along these five to 10 minutes, I ramp up the speed so that at the end of these five or 10 minutes, I'm feeling pretty warm in my body, I got my heart rate up and I'm ready to head into the session. Now I continue my warm up with some dynamic stretches and some dynamic exercises. I have about six exercises that I do, two or three for the upper body. Then for the lower body, I have about four or five exercises that covers the majority of the lower body muscle groups that I will use in the session. After that, I go for some foam rolling and also here, depending on how I feel, if I feel pretty stiff or tired, I may go for a bit longer, but around five to 10 minutes here as well, where I try to go through the entire body from my upper back down to my calves. Foam rolling is a great way to loosen up your muscles. And if you aren't foam rolling already, I highly suggest you get a foam roller or you head to the gym to use a foam roller. It's kind of a self massage or myofascial release as it's also called. But if you're not foam rolling already, I highly suggest you get into the habit of start doing that because that will help you massively in the long run. 
after the biking, the jog on the treadmill, the foam rolling and the dynamic exercises, I feel pretty good to start the session. And then what I usually like to do is to split my sessions up during the course of a week, so I don't want to do everything all at once. So one session may just be lower body and focus on the lower body and maybe some core exercises. One session may just be the upper body and also some core. And sometimes I may even opt for a full body session where I go through the whole body, but I won't spend so much time on each body part as I maybe do in a lower body or an upper body focus session. So if you're new to the gym and you don't really know what exercises to do, I highly suggest that you start with the three compound exercises, and those are squats, deadlifts, and bench press. Compound exercises means that you're using almost all of your body's muscles in this exercise. So for a back squat, you're not just isolating one muscle group in your legs, you're using the entirety of your legs, you're also using your core to stabilize your body to hold the weight up. So it's an exercise that recruits a lot of muscle groups and that's why it's called compound exercise. The same goes with the deadlift, where it's a different type of movement, but you're also recruiting many different muscle groups. The bench press is more of a compound exercise for the upper body where you use almost the entirety of your upper body, your shoulders, your chest, your arms, to actually lift the weight up. And also, if you haven't done these exercises before, just start off by training your technique in the exercises. Watch videos on how you should actually do a back squat, listen to the advice, try to film yourself to see if you're doing the exercise in the correct manner. And then over time, as you get better and better and more comfortable in these exercises, you can start ramping up the weights. So I always like to start off with one of these compound exercises. So straight after the warm up, I may head into a back squat. And here I also like to continue the warm up, but in the exercise. So I usually do two or three warm up sets depending on how hard I will hit this exercise. So for back squats, I just do some bodyweight squats for 10 to 15 reps, I rest for a bit, and then I take the bar and I do eight to 10 reps with 20 kilos, just a bar to keep warming up and to keep priming my muscles for, for the weight that they're about to lift. Then I may go for six to eight reps of 40 kilos, and then I may do some at 60 kilos as well. And all these weights, they will differ depending on where you are in your journey. You may not throw on 60 kilos during your warm-up sets, and that's totally okay because you're not there yet in your journey. Your warm-up set may just consist of doing 10 bodyweight squats followed by five reps of just doing squats with, with the bar. And here, once we start getting to the strength exercises, it's important to put some context into it as well, into your planning and into what you actually do in the gym. So if I'm in season, I will not go for four sets of heavy squats. I may go for two or three and I may lower the weights, but if I'm in the off season, I can raise the volume. So I will go for more sets and more reps compared to what I do in season. Then we get into the working sets and now we're really gonna start the strength training. So for instance, I may start off with a back squat, as I said. So in the gym, if you don't know, we have sets and we have reps. A rep is short for repetition, and that is how many times you do a specific exercise in one set. So I may go for eight squats in one set, and I may go for four sets. That means I do eight squats four times, which is 32 squats in total. And then we have something called rep ranges, and the rep ranges are where we operate. So sometimes you may focus on low repetitions, but with a high weight. And working in different rep ranges leads to different results. Overall, whatever rep range you work in, you will get stronger and your muscles will get bigger, but there are rep ranges, depending on what your current goals are, that are more efficient than the others. If you wanna work your max strength, you may want to keep the reps low. So head for one to five reps, let's say, with a really heavy weight. And the higher you go with the reps, the more you start going into some kind of endurance training and working your muscles under fatigue. So if I go for 15 reps, I won't be able to do that with a really heavy weight. So then I will have to lower the weight and then I will focus more on working my muscles under fatigue. And it depends on what your goals are, but usually when you want to get stronger, you want to keep the reps fairly low, one up to, I'd say a maximum of eight reps, but this totally depends on what you're doing 
and then work in that rep range. And what you want to do is the, that you want to finish off your set within that rep range. And if you can go higher, then you usually have too low of a weight and you may have to raise the weight slightly to be able to progress. Because when you want to get stronger, what you want to do is that you want to spark some adaptation. And to be able to spark an adaptation process within your body, you have to implement something that is called progressive overload. I talk about this in one of my videos and I highly suggest you go watch that one because it teaches you some really valuable principles about training overall. You can watch that up here after you're done with this video and I highly suggest you go watch that. So now for instance in the off season I may raise the volume and the volume refers to the overall amount of reps and sets that you do. So I may go for three or four sets of eight to twelve reps of squats. And then I have a rest period in between to let my muscle rest up before I tackle the next set. So I go for eight reps of squats, I have a rest for two to three minutes, and then I go for another eight, rest for two to three minutes, and then do that three or four times. Then I move on to the next exercise. And what I like to do here, after having hit a compound exercise like a squat or a bench press or a deadlift, I will go into something that is called a unilateral exercise. A squat or a deadlift or a bench press, if you're doing them with a barbell, they're all bilateral exercises. In a bilateral exercise, you use both legs or both arms at the same time. In a unilateral exercise, you're just working one leg at a time or one arm at a time, depending on what exercise you do. So I may head into something like a Bulgarian split squat, where I put my leg up on a bench and then I work one leg at one time. And the benefit of doing a unilateral exercise is that it will work on your stability and your balance while also working the muscle at the same time. And also if you have any imbalances within your legs or in your arms, that will even itself out over time as you continue to do the strength training. So in terms of structure, what you want to do is you want to start off with the most explosive exercises. So if you intend to do some jumps or some sprints or anything that requires your muscles to act in an explosive way, you want to put them first in the session because they're the most demanding on your body and you want your body to be at its peak once you do these, once you decide to go for these exercises. Then after you have done speed related work, you want to go for the power work. This can also be jumps, it can be uh, doing a back squat but with maybe less weight but you're doing it in a more explosive way and then you want to go for the strength work and finally the endurance work. So you can split it up into speed, power, strength and endurance and that's the order that you want to do those exercises. So you always start off with the most explosive exercises first and then you finish off with the most endurance based exercises in the end. So after I've done a squat, which is a bilateral compound exercise, I have done a unilateral exercise for my legs or my upper body to work on my stability, my balance, and to even out imbalances that I may have. And then for the third exercise, I may jump into something like a leg press. What I do in a back squat or a Bulgarian split squat is that I'm using my entire body, I'm working my balance at the same time as I'm working my legs. But in a leg press, I'm isolating the legs because I don't have to do the balance work. This is why you can take a lot more weight in a leg press than you can in a back squat, for example. In something like a leg press, you can really take advantage of the fact that you don't have to balance the weight that you're trying to lift. So for example, in the first exercise, the back squat, and the second one, the Bulgarian split squat, then you have to make up for it with balance and that is really good when you want to train for something like a sport like football where you want to be able to use your muscles and your strength in an athletic way but there is also a time and a place where you can take advantage of exercises like a leg press or a leg extension because then you're able to do more work on the muscle if you want to because you're isolating that muscle in itself and it doesn't take such a toll on your entire body as a back squat does. Because doing 12 sets of a back squat will be really taxing on your central nervous system and that's when you can take advantage of something like a leg press where you can get more work on your legs but not be so taxing on your CNS. After having done three or four bigger exercises like a back squat, a split squat, 
leg press and maybe a leg extension. Then I may head into some core exercises or some accessory lifts that are more focused on isolated muscles and as I said will not be as taxing on your CNS as something like a back squat. But it also depends on how much work I want to do. I may stop the session after these three or four exercises and then I'm done for that particular day. Depends on how much I want to do and it also depends on what goals you have. Then at the end of the session, if I want to get some endurance work in, I may opt for some cardio on the bike or on the treadmill as well. But usually I just stretch and do some foam rolling and then I'm done for that session. So what are some takeaways that you can take with you from this video? Is that you want to apply context on why you're actually going to the gym. You need to analyze your strengths and weaknesses and then make a plan to be able to work on those. And then once you're in the gym, work from speed, power, strength and endurance in the order that you put the exercises. And then if you want, finish off with some cardio. If you want more ideas on what exercise you can do or ideas you can implement, I highly suggest that you subscribe to the channel. I'm currently running a project on my own called Project Reborn and it's something that every aspiring footballer should be here to see and to take part of themselves. I talk more about Project Reborn in detail in the very first episode that you can watch up there and in this project I'm documenting all my gym sessions, all my football sessions and talk through why I do what I actually do. I hope you managed to learn something from this video, but that's it for this time. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.